بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم این اسلام علیکم پاکستان ویلکم بیک ٹو کارپوریٹ گورننس وی ہیو بین انگیج ان اے ویری انٹرسٹنگ اینڈ اے ویری پریکٹیکل ماڈیول انکمپسنگ دی سبجیکٹس اینڈ دا ٹاپکس آف کرپشن اینٹی کرپشن انویسٹیگیٹنگ کرپشن ٹرانسپرنسی اینڈ اکاؤنٹیبلٹی ناؤ ویو ڈن سم ایکسرسائزز وچ ویری انٹرسٹنگ اینڈ بیسکلی اوپن اپ یور مائنڈ اینڈ ٹو ڈے وی آلسو گوئنگ ٹو ڈو این ایکٹیوٹی اینڈ دیر از اے کیس اسٹڈی ناؤ دس کیس اسٹڈی Uh, is based upon certain real events but the names uh, of the different characters and the organization naturally has been changed and some of the uh, episode has also uh, been recalibrated and realigned to ensure uh, that uh, you cannot exactly identify uh, which organization uh, this is about but again this is a real life situation and therefore this will be uh, a reinforcement of the theory that we have been talking about and would enable you to think out of the box and find the relevant solutions. Now, uh, the name of the case study is Infinity Financial Services. And basically, this case study is about uh, the main character, who is uh, Mujibullah Khan. He graduated from Peshawar University and was selected as an MTO in Fata Bank Limited. Uh, he quickly rose the ladder and within three years became the branch manager of Khyber uh, Agency. And that uh, was a what we call Uh, was a meteoric rise uh, towards success. But while he was there, he became hubristic and began facilitating friends, discarding the State Bank of Pakistan's guidelines and regulations. And resultingly, many of his process loans turned into bank defaults and the Fata Bank initiated an inquiry against him. So what we see is, is that we had this dynamic individual who had all of the right essentials and ingredients within him. But unfortunately, he got carried away And he started facilitating friends and involved uh, himself in nepotism and discrimination uh, in the context of helping people out. And that resulted in bad loans and therefore an inquiry was initiated against him. Uh, the inquiry commission held Mujibullah Khan responsible for the unscrupulous transactions and recommended employment termination uh, with a fine of 1 million rupees. Now, after that, uh, because uh, he was no more in the bank, Therefore, he got together six of his friends and they together registered a financial services company uh, which was circulate cash investments and solicit high-end clients. Now, after that, they got together and registered Infinity Financial Services uh, Private Limited with SECP and they made a lavish office and adopted a very lavish uh, business style because uh, their main objective uh, was to attract investment and to attract a lot of funds into their company so that Uh, they could uh, use it uh, for different purposes. Now, uh, what we see is that uh, there were three main financial products of Infinity Financial Services. The first product is portfolio managed accounts where the client deposited their amount uh, on the basis of 3 to 4% uh, fixed profit margin per month. And the second one was trading account where the investment was made on profit and loss basis with a loss of up to 10% uh, per month. Uh, and the third one was trading account on profit and loss basis where profit and loss was completely borne by the client and Infinity Financial Services Private Limited would only charge a processing fee. So these were their three main financial products which they uh, basically offered to their clients. Uh, the first two years were just amazing and there was uh, this exponential growth and Mujib and his friends basically started materializing all of their dreams. Investors were getting a very high percentage. And the organization also was able to open up two branches in Aftabad and Mardan. However, things suddenly then changed. Uh, there was a dip in the market. And then one of their largest clients pulled out their investment. That led some of the employees, the jittery employees, to basically advise uh, their investors to take, a, take the money out uh, from the company. And that basically led to a run on the accounts. So, uh, Mujibullah tried to control the situation, but mayor associations does not give anything. And after a few months, uh, the whole organization collapsed and the IFS directors went into hiding. Uh, some of the uh, IFS effectees approached the National uh, Accountability Bureau. And then uh, after a very extensive search, Mujibullah was finally arrested from Karachi and arrest warrants were also issued against all of the IFS directors. and also the top employees of the company. Now, the questions which emerge from this very interesting case study are, 
uh, number one and that should get you thinking and preferably if you can uh, sit with uh, one of your uh, friends and have this uh, discussion it would be uh, much more uh, enriching and also would be uh, very good for you to understand the different concepts of accountability and anti-corruption. Now, uh, the first question is that you may identify the mistakes of Mujibullah Khan and what would you have done differently. So, first identify the mistakes and then as a professional, think yourself as a professional, how would you do these things differently? Uh, second question is comment on the three financial products uh, of IFX Limited. What was wrong with the products and how can they be recalibrated? So, again, they had those three main products, but it was those products which led to the downfall of the organization. So, what chiseling of the product or fine tuning of the product would you have done to ensure that uh, these products would actually enable the company to grow and not collapse? And what type of recalibration is required also that you should be uh, answering? What lessons can we derive from this case study? So, again, uh, this case study uh, has uh, many lessons and it is uh, very important uh, that we tend to learn from them and we can also elaborate on them that what were those different uh, different questions. Now, what would be the anticipated conclusion of this NAB investigation and case? So, again, uh, you would be uh, studying the situation and then keeping in the national accountability ordinance, uh, you would be uh, applying that and seeing that how this investigation is going to proceed. Study the NAB law, uh, which is available on the internet and identify the clauses which relate to the private sector. That is very important. Which sections of the NAB ordinance would be applicable on this case and what would be the best way forward for the NAB prosecution? So, again, a very real life question, just a few lines, but definitely its execution uh, would be mind blowing. So, you have to look at the NAB ordinance, uh, you have to relate it to the private sector, you have to apply it on the case and then uh, identify the best way forward uh, so that the real culprits are uh, taken to task. So, enjoy the case study and if there are any questions, then we can manage them later on. Take care. Thank you.